welcome to the St. Charles City County Library. My name is Elizabeth Nelson, the Classes and Events Coordinator. We are so excited to have you here for our first Facebook Live author event. Since our doors closed back in March, we've been working hard to bring the library to you through virtual classes and events in our Li My Library at Home series. Tonight's event is part of St. Charles County Reads, the St. Charles City County Library's inaugural community read event. Even though we're apart, we can all be part of a movement that brings us together. Our feature book is How to Bake Everything by Mark Bittman. We really couldn't think of a better way to connect than food, since we've all got to eat. To learn more about St. Charles County Reads, including more virtual classes and events like tonight's, and register for a chance to win a gift basket full of baking supplies, or gift cards from local bakeries, restaurants, and community partners, go to mylibrary.org backslash St. Charles County Reads. Tonight, we are thrilled to have with us Jeffrey Eisner, creator of Pressure Look, an easy to follow video recipe blog and author of the Step-by-Step -step Instant Pop Cookbook, 100 simple recipes for spectacular results with photographs of every step. Jeffrey's book debuted on April 23rd on the USA Today bestseller list at number 13 and was number two last week on Publishers Weekly trade paper front list. And back in January, when he announced his upcoming book, within a few hours of pre-order, the book hit over five number one lists on Amazon. Are you looking for a copy? Main Street Books, our local independent bookstore, has one for you. Check out their website, MainStreetBooks.net, for delivery and curbside options. Two quick shout outs before we bring on Jeff. First one to Dawn, who is one of our staff members, Back in January, she sent me an email and said Jeff's book was coming out and asked, uh, could we have Jeff in for an author event? She got a huge yes. We have many Instant Pot fans here in St. Charles County. Three of our staff, Don, Michelle, and Karen, all teach Instant Pot classes called Why is the Instant Pot So Hot? The next one, which will be a virtual class, is on May 19th at 7 p.m. Please visit mylibrary.org to register. Also, a huge thank you to Jeff's team, Juliana, Kim, and Charles for helping make tonight happen. And to Tiffany, our social media guru, who is feeding me all your questions for Jeff. A quick note about tonight's schedule. Tonight, we'll start by asking Jeff some questions. And then uh, we're going to move on to a demo where he's made for us our, some Asian garlic noodles. If you have a question, please post a comment on the Facebook Live event. You may have seen Jeffrey from the Food Network, Good Morning America, and Rachel Ray. And now he joins us from Queens, New York, a place which he loves, where he lives with his partner Richard and hilarious Norwich Terrier Banjo. Jeff, welcome to the St. Charles City County Library. Oh, wow. First of all, thank you so much, Elizabeth. It, <laughs> I have to pinch myself because this is very surreal. I never in a million years would have thought that I would be doing an event like this. <laughs> um, and what an honor it is to be doing it with, um, with St. Charles and everything. I'm Thank you for having me, truly. You're very welcome. Thank you for joining us. We have a huge fan base here, so we are excited. <laughs> oh, I'm so honored. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so how is Queens right now? I mean, we are, you know, I, what I, I love so much about being a New Yorker is mm -hmm. that we rally together and we're like, we are as much as we can be like pushy and fussy, we're really a big family. And it, when it takes sometimes a crazy thing in the world to happen to really prove that. And every day at seven o'clock, you, you get emotional with all the support, the cheering, the, the, the applauding, everything of what's going on out there. You know, we're flattening things. Things are going to get better from here on. I have no doubt. And, you know, it, things are just, the sun is coming out. The yeah. sun is coming out. Yes, yes. We're having some summer weather here, too, which is great for our spirits. Yes, indeed. All right. Well, let's get started with some questions. So first, uh, when or have you always been interested in cooking or when did that kind of get started? 
You know, <clears throat> my grandma, Lil, who I actually mentioned in the book a, a bit in the beginning, and I actually have a recipe in homage to her. She was really my cooking school. Uh, I never ever went to any professional training or anything like that. She was the one when she was in the kitchen doing the old school Jewish cooking with the stuffed cabbage. Um, I think that some other people call them like galumki or something. It's like a it's, a, it's like a Hungarian type dish. It's all over Eastern Europe, really. Yeah. Um, she brought it here with stuffed cabbage, and I was just in awe of watching her. She never wrote anything down. Everything was just pulling from the cupboards, almost like putting things in a cauldron, you know, yeah. making delicious things happen. And I always, you know, from there, I just always was interested in it, and I always loved to dabble in it. Mm -hmm. um, I never thought, oh, I'd be doing it for my career, that's for sure. <laughs> but um, I was just always, always bitten by the bug at that point, and I always loved theater. Mm -hmm. uh, growing up as well, so I figured, you know, at some point I should marry the two together, and I guess yeah. that's what so yeah, you definitely got to with the video blog, and yeah, there you go, exactly. Yeah, that is perfect. <laughs> yes. uh, it does always amaze me when people can like pull just things out of nowhere, no recipe, and just go. That's yeah. always. It's not a, not a talent I have. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's funny because a lot of a lot of the times people don't measure. It's like you ask an old school grandma or a no no or a booby, and you say, "What are they like?" I don't measure. I don't know. Don't, don't bother me with these questions. Like, you know, <laughs> you just by eye until it tastes good. When you want to share recipes with people, you can't do that. Sometimes people really want to follow recipes to, to the book, and you have to be able to give them some sort of guideline. Yeah. So, you know, you know. So. Yeah. All right. Well. Um. So you were a branded content video producer for nearly 10 years, and then you left uh, because the job wasn't fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more about this journey from video producer to pressure lock um, and kind of advice you have for people for making a big change, following their dreams? It's, yeah, it's it's really more about, it was, it was a little bit debilitating because I was doing a job that I, you know, I didn't. I didn't find fulfillment in, you know, I have a candied like Pippin quest. Like what can I do to find fulfillment? Mm -hmm. I'm sprinkling in the musical theater there. Yeah. And, um, right. <laughs> you know, I really, I just wanted to know what can I do to make myself feel better and, and to make myself feel like I'm making some sort of a difference. Mm -hmm. And not to, not to ever put down those who work in PR or advertising as producers are important jobs for mm -hmm. sure. I just didn't get fulfilled from it. Yeah. So I, you know, as a, for fun, I said, let me just do something that I, I love cooking. Cooking to me was always therapeutic. It's extra therapeutic for me to go shopping in a market mm -hmm. and a, in the after hours when one's open 24 hours, I'm there like at midnight sometimes. And yeah. I just place to myself. It's like supermarket sweet, but with no one else there. It's yeah. wonderful. And um, I just started to just, you know, I said, you know, let me just start to play around with, you know, cooking in my which I had just gotten. It was the new thing. Mm -hmm. And I said, let me, um, this, you know, a lot of people were intimidated about how to use it. They weren't sure exactly how to get started. It's This is kind of like a new thing in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. We have the slow cookers and then we have this thing. What does this thing do? And I was one of those people too. So when I got one on, um, when it was on sale during Black Friday a few years ago now, mm -hmm. I made it my mission. to like, let me just make a video, put some of those video editing skills and then, yeah. And then, you know, share a video out there, see what happens, and whatever happens, happens. And it happened. And people yeah. were like, you showed me how to use this thing. <laughs> and I just started to, as a side project, like mm -hmm. just for fun, started doing this. And then, you know, the, my passion is to make people laugh, okay. uh, to make people feel like I'm, I can to try to help people in any way that I can, where you know, to bring a little bit of New York, or I should say, Jew York, into their life, uh, stuff like that. And um, that's what I really wanted to do above all else. If you really have something that you really have a, a passion for, and if you feel like you can find an audience mm -hmm. doing that, what have you got to lose? Yeah. If you don't find the audience, then you don't find the audience. If you find the audience, then you're there, and then you're on to something. Keep going. See what keeps. See what happens next. Yeah, I mean, you just might write a book someday. I don't know, yeah. you know <laughs> something like that. And yeah. luckily, it got to the point where, um, it, when it was time to depart the company, um, it, it, pressure luck was just literally it, it, the wheels were taking off on the runway, and I was able to sustain myself doing this as my full time career. I've never been happier in my entire life. I've never. I feel like I'm making a difference in people's lives. Mm -hmm. uh, differences that I never in a million years would have thought that I would have had an impact on to the point where I'm like a blubbering mess, like, you know, <laughs> reading some notes. 
so um, my, my, my mission, my, my mission, my, my advice there is to just say, if you have something in you that you feel like you, you're better suited, your talents are better suited for, and it can be something that you can potentially turn into a career, mm-hmm. what harm is there than to, to explore it? There's no harm at all. Like, especially if, you, if nothing, if this, none of this would have happened, Elizabeth, yeah. I would have felt content I was doing something that I enjoyed on the side. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's really the bottom line. Okay. Yeah. So doing something you enjoy and just and seeing where it goes. And if, exactly. if yeah, uh, yeah, love that. Um, so the blog is pressure luck cooking there blog, pressure luck mm-hmm. And I love the easy to search like recipes with all the different categories you can go to. I'm a vegetarian, so it's super easy for me to just cook those or vegan. You've got meats, you've got, you know, any, uh, any category you could think of. Um, and then the menus I thought were really great too. So you've got like Cinco de Mayo menus or game day menus. So those are um, all those all those things people can search for and find uh, an idea uh, you have. You know, you've got ideas for them. Um, so just for on the blog, um, were there any like kind of inspirational people or circumstances to make it happen, or was it kind of just kind of a gradual move toward it, like you described? I mean, it was really just a gradual move. You mean, you mean like in, in terms of the recipes themselves, on the, what I feature on the blog, or both? Yeah, like either getting the video blog going. You kind of talked about that, um, but yeah, if there were any kind of any any inspirational people that kind of kind of moved you towards that. Yeah, you know, it was honestly it was the people in the in the Facebook groups where I found to, I started started posting about in, there was all these Instant Pot groups, and there's the wonderful Instant Pot community group, which is a great resource and. Okay. All these people were like, can you please make recipes? Can you please make this kind of a recipe? Can you make that kind of recipe? And I'm like, if I have all these people literally like knocking and saying, can you help me? Can you help me? Yeah. Help them. Why yeah. that? help them? Do Give the people what they want and see what happens. And then yeah. exactly. And then it all started really before the blog came out. Mm-hmm. It was, um, I was on my own Facebook using my regular Facebook name, yeah. posting you know, these Instant Pot groups. Um, and then I would post the recipe like in my notes section. I don't even know if that exists anymore on my Facebook page, mm-hmm. and which is so like archaic and, and just like, bizarre. So I was like, um, and then I have, you know, people were like, you should start a blog, start a blog. Yeah. And then I'm able to have everything organized in one spot. It's also how I'm able to earn a living having a blog. So that's the reason that pushed me there. And of course, the variety of recipes, I wanted to find a way to appeal to everyone. And if listen, if some people don't want to eat like a certain dish that has meat in it, say it has like a it's like a pasta dish with chicken, you can simply leave the chicken out. Anything yeah. like that. Yeah. Cool. So there's always options. Yeah, yes, yes. The options are good. Um so then you moved on to now the cookbook. So the step by step instant pot cookbook, mm-hmm. um, which is great. Yeah, like very, you know, easy to find what you're looking for, uh, certain types of recipes, that kind of thing. I also think the salt this beginning section is really solid for you know those that just got the instant pot because you really go into how to put it together and if this is wrong here's you know what may be the problem and that kind of thing so it's really it's great for you know the beginners but then also the advanced people that are looking for change Mm -hmm. Uh, and so where or why did you decide to write the book a lot of people wanted it (laughs) i got a lot when are you writing a book when you're writing a book and i had a bunch of offers come my way from I'm, I don't even know if these were legitimate publishers. <laughs> you, you get you read things and you get a sense of like, is this? You get a good vibe from things, right? Yeah. And then last March of 2019, um, I got a message from Michael Zerbin of mm-hmm. Veritas, which is an imprint of Little Brown, and he he began that imprint. And mm-hmm. he's a great guy. And he messaged me on on Facebook, and I, you know, he's like, are you interested in doing a cookbook? And I was like. And then I saw he was like with a very legitimate publisher, and I'm like, wait a minute! I'm like, this maybe this is it? Maybe this is it? I'm like, but yes, I am. I'm like, but it needs to have my vision. I, I want it to. Be, I'm going to be a little bit of. A, I wasn't in a rush to make one. I wanted to make one, and if I'm going to do a cookbook and I'm going to put all this time into it, it's it's going to be the book that I want it to be. It yeah. to mm-hmm. be, and, you know, very much representative of mm-hmm. my um, my website and my blog and my you know all that stuff and my and my YouTube channel instructional visual aids and i said how do i put this in a book we're gonna have to basically do step-by-step photos for every yeah. step and then do a final hero shot i'm like i'm not going to do a book where i'm going to have you know stock photos of or someone <laughs> else made them they're not the food everything in the book has to be mine 
and made. He was like, I love it. Let's do it. Okay. And it sounds great when you discuss it, right? But then yeah. you're like, wait, we have to shoot a hundred recipes. That's a, that's a process. <laughs> wow. And then that happened. And then that happened. And so it was wow. literally the most draining, intense, and rewarding experience I've ever had in my entire life. I am so blessed and fortunate that I have Voracious because I am just so yeah. fortunate lucky that they created something so beautiful and i will sh i will sh keep singing its praises it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> this beautiful photography from my yeah. uh, lexi's azulia wow. my stylist sarah constantino wow. um, i'm very fortunate and, I, and the most important part about the book like you said is a lot of people can sometimes find the manuals their instant pots confusing yeah. i wanted to just do my own kind of min my own little in jeffrey's terms manual yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, just read this. This is uh, yeah. translated by you. Yeah, yeah. Like, don't worry about any manuals. Just read. Yeah. What it's going to tell you. It's a very short read. I try to make it fun and keep it real and exciting. Yeah. So. Wow. Okay. Well, we're gonna turn this to some live questions from our audience here on Facebook. Um. So first, about the book, what was the most exciting part of writing it? <sighs> <laughs> the most exciting part about writing the book was probably having the, all this free reign to myself. Saying, well, what do I, what, what recipes do I want to include in this book? Mm -hmm. You know, which ones do, should I put in there? Because it's about 50 to 50 in terms of some of my most popular recipes from my website and then the other ones that are just as new to the, just for the book. Yeah. Um, so that was, it was really exciting to tend to basically have to write 50 new recipes. Okay. And, a very short period of time yeah. and just and that and, and test them out and make sure they were right yeah and then to make just get that going yeah. i think that's probably the most exciting process was really choosing the recipes and then yeah. having a specific deadline where i had to write them all yeah and also exciting could also you know of course me you know anxious so yeah. I was, it, was yeah. it was a mix of both a little bit, yeah. And I love how you've got like little blurbs in there about um, some of the recipes too. Like I saw the mac and cheese one was your first instant pot, you know, recipe, and you've got like your little a little note about that. So I thought yeah. that was really cool. That those, those are in there too, little personalized notes. Mm -hmm. um, so then they also want to know when's your next one coming out. <laughs> well, I mean, it would be lovely if that were to happen one day. I, we will see when that happens. Uh -huh. um, you know, there's, it's, I think there's a strong possibility it'll happen for sure. I mean, I, but then again, I can't say anything just yet, but um, I'm looking forward to, to, to more brighter, you know, futures with the book, with other future. Yeah. So we'll see what happens there. Um, and if there is another one coming out, believe me, you will know. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so how about your favorite recipe from the book? Oh, that's like choosing your favorite child. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, I said I'll say I'm gonna go with hmm, because it's my it's it's new for the book specifically, and it's inspired by my grandmother. I'm gonna say my grandma Lil's unstuffed cabbage stew. It's yeah. basically stuffed cabbage without having to stuff them, and it's mm -hmm. more, yeah. it's a little bit more liquidy, so it's it's a delicious, rich tomato based sweet and sour stew with mm -hmm. just. Wonderful, like hearty loads of cabbage in there to the perfect, the perfect bite. Yeah. You want it cooked with meat and some rice in there. It's a glorious, comforting dish. Tastes just like what grandma would make. So it, that's got to be it. She's my inspiration, really, for this yeah. book. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. So we have um. Oh, a, t a ten year old who wants to know if you ever talk to schools and could maybe teach the cafeteria ladies a thing or two. <laughs> you know what? When I was, I'm not kidding. When I was in school, like a kid, I used to love the cafeteria food. It's probably because my mom made the worst, most disgusting sandwiches ever. Okay. So I used to like sneak on the line and be like, "Oh, I forgot my lunch money today," or something like that. And then I had to, like give them back. They, and those lunch ladies would get you. They say, "Where's your charge?" The next day, <laughs> back. So I'd have to like find, "Mom, I need money. I'm sorry, your food." I didn't like the tuna fish without the <laughs> yeah. dressing in it. So, and the carrot sticks. Regardless, I would be honored to to have to teach a class for kids in a school. Honored? Okay. Are you kidding me? I would be thrilled <laughs> and honored. And you know, it might not be as good as Friday Square Pizza that you would get in school. That the mm -hmm. school squares, but I'll do my best. I promise. Thank you. All right. Well, that's something we can work on when you come out here to Missouri. We'll see. See about a school visit. Um, 
I'm sorry, mom. I didn't mean to offend you. Mom, my mom makes really delicious foods, by the way. She makes great uh, uh, French onion soup. It's so good. She makes a really good lasagna. I love you, Ma. Don't be mad. <laughs> uh -oh. um, all right. So, um, oh, one question, uh, quick. Why didn't the cream of bacon soup make it into the book? Uh, you know, it was literally like Solomon at that point. Like, what do I choose? Like, you know, like that, that decision. It's like in there. And, uh, and like, I guess I have to write another book now, right? Yeah. Like, I have yeah. The ones that weren't in it. it why did they make it in? It's just because literally I had to pick the ones that I that I feel like both myself and many others really mm -hmm. love the most. I, I you know there are some recipes that have come out since I wrote the book that I put on my blog that I'm like I wish that could have been in the book, yeah. and I think they all could have been. But I think a 100 recipe cookbook is like you don't want to be having any more. But it's like between 85 to 100 is the, the ideal cookbook because right. then you start getting these recipes that are just like as recipe it's like you know what i mean it's like it becomes like and i want them to really be quality and you gotta yeah. be wanting more for some more stuff too right so yeah. the next so the next volume will go this was basically this is the inaugural book and hopefully if there are other books yeah they can trust that they're gonna get something good if they enjoy the book yeah okay um okay let's see here do you um have any suggestions for like lower fat recipe from the book or kind of healthier options or how to, how to do any of those kind of things? Yeah. I mean, any, I put it up as like a forward in the, in the introduction of my book, um, that really any ingredient can be subbed for something to meet a dietary need. If you don't want to use, like, you know, soy sauce or something like that, you can use coconut amino instead of using a heavy cream, you can use, you know, Greek, fat free Greek yogurt. Mm -hmm. or in, it'll melt in nicely. Mm -hmm. Um, if you don't want to use like you know brown sugar or something like that, you can absolutely use a, sugar, a popular sugar substitute, mm -hmm. uh, or you know even like maple syrup is like a, like a pure maple syrup or 100% raw honey is fine and, and adequate. There are ways to alter any recipe to anyone's diet. It's just you know simply just take a moment, know what a good substitute is, mm -hmm. and then put it in, the or you can simply leave them out. Yeah, not a problem. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um. So we have a few shout outs here quick. Um, beer cheese soup, mushroom risotto, and then banjo. So thank you for saying hi to banjo. <laughs> well, but technically the beer cheese soup is a shout out to Richard too, because he uh, it's his favorite soup of mine. And okay. I've never seen the guy eat anything like that. He's a huge college football fan. <laughs> he the an Auburn War Eagle thing. I don't know how to any you know Alabama people out there? It's the same state at the end of the day, right? <laughs> but like you know what I mean. Um, so he loves that soup, no matter right. what. And um, and banjo. I mean, banjo loves all of you. See, if he was there, if he was here right now, believe me, he'd be licking all of you right now. <laughs> so he's he's he appreciates it. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, uh, maybe we should get on to the demo. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I'm excited to see some Asian garlic noodles. So. Sure, sure. This is exciting. This is fun. So uh, I guess roll the tape. Yeah. All right. Here we go. <laughs> hey, guys. It's Jeff from Pressure Luck. And if there's anything I love in this world, it's noodles, especially of Asian cuisine. However, when I go to the markets, it's a little challenging for me to go and recreate those amazing classic noodle dishes I get at so many Asian restaurants. So I said, I'm going to make something that I can get at pretty much any supermarket and have it taste just as delicious and authentic. So we're going to go to the Instant Pot and we are going to make the most amazing Asian garlic noodles you've ever done in no time at all. And it could not be easier or done with more accessible ingredients. So it's high time we created some magic in that Instant Pot no wands required, and make some of the best homemade Asian noodles you ever had. Let's take one large red bell pepper and slice them up so they resemble matchstick-sized pieces, just like that. One bunch of scallions, sliced up. Now we'll go to the Instant Pot and we're gonna add in one quarter of a cup of sesame oil. It can be toasted, it can be regular, it really makes no difference what kind you use. So now I'll come to the control panel on the Instant Pot and I wanna give that oil some heat, so I'll hit the saute button and make sure I'm on the more or the high setting, okay? And after three minutes of our oil heating up in the pot, I now wanna add in one whole pound of mushrooms that are sliced. You can use either baby bello, white, 
or um, shiitake. Just make sure the stems are removed if you use shiitake, okay? Add that to the pot. Now, if you hate mushrooms, you can leave them out. I also want to add in my matchstick cut peppers. And nine, you heard me right, guys, nine cloves of garlic, or that's also equivalent to three tablespoons that are crushed or minced or pressed. Wouldn't be Asian garlic noodles if you didn't have the garlic. All right, guys, now let's just saute everything in the pot, stir it all around, and we're gonna just let these cook for about three minutes. And after about three minutes of sauteing our veggies while stirring occasionally and setting occasionally, we're gonna now add in two and a half cups of broth of your choice. Now I'm using a garlic broth for this, but you can also use chicken broth, vegetable broth, whatever you want. And now it is time to add in our noodles. Guys, we are just gonna be using some good old fashioned spaghetti for this. No running around looking for some very difficult to find noodle. Very simple right here. And we're gonna add the whole box. Now, in order for this spaghetti to fit properly in the pot, I'm going to have to break it in half. But it doesn't matter because it's not an Italian dish, so no noodles are going to come after me. So I'm just going to put my spaghetti in like that, and you just do it in batches until it's all in there, and you can crisscross it. Okay, now that my spaghetti's in the pot, I don't want to stir it. I simply want to submerge it in the broth to make sure it's in there as best as possible. It's okay if some of the spaghetti is still peeking above it a little bit. That's fine. It'll end up getting cooked. Just make sure it's mostly submerged in the broth. Again, don't stir it though or get under there. That's gonna make things a little complicated if you do. If you do it just like this, you'll be just fine. All right, so this next ingredient's important because it's gonna prevent our spaghetti from clinging to one another. And I'm going to add in two tablespoons or a quarter of a stick of salted butter. Just put it right into the middle. As well as two teaspoons of dried tarragon flakes and just sprinkle them throughout, just like that. And that's it guys, we're ready to pressure cook. I'm gonna secure my lid. Make sure that I'm in the sealing position. Now we'll come back down to the control panel and hit the cancel or the keep warm slash cancel button, depending on your model. And then hit the pressure cook or the manual button, depending on your model. We wanna go, guys, for eight minutes at high pressure. That is it. Don't worry about this middle thing here where it says less normal or more. We always want that on normal and the pressure should be high. And when it says on, that's when it's building pressure. And once it comes to pressure is when it'll start to count down from the time we set it for. Meanwhile, while the pasta's cooking, let's create our amazing sauce that we're gonna add at the very end. I wanna add in a quarter of a cup each of some hoisin sauce and oyster sauce. And this stuff can be easily found in most markets in the Asian section or just like in the international aisle, that's fine. You could also easily get this online. One tablespoon of soy sauce. I usually use low sodium because I can't taste the difference and because it's less salt. And one tablespoon of a squeezed or minced ginger. This stuff looks like applesauce, and you can get this in Costco or many markets as well. Uh, it's just literally called squeezed ginger. I love using it for this. It's much easier. And if you want the sauce a bit on the spicy side, you can add in one to two tablespoons. I like to add two tablespoons of a chili garlic sauce. That's this stuff. The stuff that like sriracha makes, the same thing. Or you can just use sriracha. This doesn't make any difference really, but I really like the chili garlic sauce if you can get your hands on it. Again, easily found in most markets in the Asian or international aisles, right by the hoisin or garlic sauce. Or sometimes by the condiments near the ketchup. All right, now let's just whisk all that together so it's nice and combined. Perfect, and now we can just set that aside. And now that we're done, we're gonna finish with a quick release. And the pin just dropped, so we'll take our lid off the pot. And there we go, perfect. Look at that, none of our spaghetti sticking to each other. The butter helps with that. Now what I wanna do is I wanna take my sauce mixture and add it to the pot, and then get in there and stir everything together so it's nice and combined and we are looking lovely. Okay, so once we've tossed all the noodles around with the sauce and we got everything all mixed together, let's just let this rest for about five minutes and it's gonna all thicken up and really come together. All right, and after a few moments of resting, I'm going to add in my scallions and you can reserve a few for topping, as well as two tablespoons of sesame seeds. I did one tablespoon of black and one of white to make it nice and pretty. And then give that a final stir so that gets nice and tossed in with all the noodles. And just look at this, guys. It looks absolutely perfect. We are ready to plate this up and serve. Let's put some in a bowl here. You could get you some tongs. You can give it a nice little twirl to make it look pretty. I'm so bad at plating, but I tried to pick up any tips I can from my amazing food stylist from my cookbook. Get a few extra mushrooms on there. Now to top it off if you want, you could sprinkle on a few additional sesame seeds and perhaps a few more scallions even if you want. I'm gonna get some chopsticks in there and we're gonna try this out. Oh yeah. I mean, just look at it. Look at it, glistening with flavor, color, and deliciousness. Oh, let's try this baby out. Mm. 
Okay guys, there it is, my Asian garlic noodles. Let's try it out, I can't wait. Look at how pretty this is. Ooh, look at this. I love using chopsticks also. Mm. Mm. Now, I'm a guy who loves, loves, loves Asian cuisine. And this right here is done so inauthentically, <laughs> but tastes so authentic. I mean, spaghetti noodles, really? But at the same time, you're never gonna know the difference. It literally tastes just like a fantastic spicy garlic Asian noodle. And if you don't want it spicy, just leave out the spice. It's no big deal, I won't tell anybody. But look what's going on in here, guys. It's glorious and beautiful and noodly and vegetably. It's a beautiful color and it tastes just as good as it looks, if not better. Look at this, oodles and noodles you just wanna stuff in your mouth. Mm. I'm a very happy boy right now. Guys, if you enjoyed these videos and this recipe, check out PressureLuckCooking.com because all of my recipes are there. All of them. I do have a cookbook that just recently came out. It's a number one bestseller. It hit numerous bestseller lists. Banjo just shook himself off because he's heard it so many times at this point. It's called the Step-by-Step -Step Instant Pot Cookbook. You don't want to miss this. It's a wonderful cookbook with step-by-step -step photos for every recipe as well as a finished product of what every recipe looks like. No guessing here. Check out Facebook.com slash PressureLuckCooking and like that page for any time new things come out, updates, things you don't want to miss. And of course, at PressureLuck on Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Thanks so much again, guys. And I'm gonna say toodles because I gotta eat a whole bowl of noodles. Take care. Yay. Well, you are not running out to get this book now. I don't know what else to do. That would look delicious. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Elizabeth. <laughs> You're welcome. And a um, hello to uh, Jeff's YouTube viewers. We had a few technical difficulties getting that stream to YouTube, so um, we apologize, but we are so happy you stuck it out, and here we are. Um, Jeff, anything for the YouTubers? I love you guys. I love you guys so much. I we, You know, technology, what can you do? I mean, it's eh, what we're going to do. But um, there's enough of me to go around on the channel as it is. This will be, you can watch us on the Facebook page, both mine and St. Charles County Library's page. Uh, they're amazing, St. Charles County Library. And this is Elizabeth, my lovely guest from St. Charles. And she, you know, hi to everybody. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, we um, will uh, ask Jeff a few more questions here, and then we'll have to wrap it up tonight. So uh, we have one um, nervous customer who just got her first Instapot, so she um, just you know wants a few kind of you can get in there and do it tips. So what would you say, Jeff? Well, the first tip I'm going to give you, Elizabeth, <laughs> because I have to, I'll get yelled at if okay. I don't say it to you. It's called Instant Pot. You said Instant. Oh. I did, we, gotta, uh, we, gotta, we gotta crack that. It's it's instant thought. I'm just gonna be. I'm gonna be. So I have to tell you. It's, it's and thank but, you. It's a tip, right? It's a tip. Okay. I'm just giving you a hard time. You know that. That's um, okay. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Some tips about your instant pot, what you can do to get started. Well, the first thing is get it out of the box. That, that's a good tip to begin. So many people get it and they just leave it in the box. They're afraid to use it. Just get it out of there. You paid for it. You got it as a gift, whatever. Use it, okay? It's amazing. <laughs> you see, start with an easy recipe like hard-boiled eggs. Once you do that, it's literally nothing more than adding a cup of water mm -hmm. and some eggs. And then you put the lid on, you put it for a few minutes, and then presto, that's all you have to do. You have hard boiled eggs that are perfect, perfect. Okay. From there, you're going to be obsessed with it and be like, what else can I do? <laughs> um, watch my getting started video, how to get started using your Instapot on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, do yourself a big favor and do that. It's, you know, it, it, it goes by like that it, and it's gonna give you answer almost any question you could have possibly had, I can promise you that. Um, my book also has a wonderful introduction, of course I have a yeah. book. Read that as well if you wish, mm -hmm. and um, I would say that the key, some key tips are have a little bit of patience. It, yes, it is called an instant pot, but not everything is literally done in just an instant. It takes a little bit of time we, to build the pressure first, and then for it to cook, and then for it to come off. That being said, mm -hmm. where it isn't done, in, it's absolutely done in an instant compared to a slow cooker. Literally a yeah. fraction, a fraction of the time. Yeah. Forget it. Like you're not waiting six to eight hours. You're waiting t at most sometimes. 
I think the quickest recipe that I've ever done was like literally about five minutes long. Yeah. So it's something yeah. very, very quickly done. Mm-hmm. Make sure that you have your liner pot always, the stainless steel yeah. liner pot and with your instant pot always in there before you cook. Sometimes yeah. people forget to put it in and they pour ingredients in and then you're yeah. using your pot because you poured it directly on the electrical uh, yeah. electrical element. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't set your instant pot on top of your stove mm-hmm. ever because sometimes, you know, I know we need some space sometimes, especially mm-hmm. in a small NYC kitchen, but sometimes people are don't re- realize that the stove is still hot and they put their instant pot on there and the bottom will melt because it's made of a plastic. Mm-hmm. Terrible plastic, but yeah. Oh, it's not heat resistant. But yeah. So to, 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 to very extreme heat. Yeah. So those are my um my, my top tips on okay. that. Okay. For the, the time, um, do you have any uh comments or suggestions on like the natural le- release or not? Like does that really uh change much of the pressure cooking? Because if you you know you're looking to save time and you want to just you know mm-hmm. not do the natural release. That's a really good question. Um mm-hmm. th- Pretty much a natural release you only do with some desserts when you're okay. cutting the instant pot as like a, a steam baker, like for mm-hmm. cheesecake and stuff like that, you would use a natural release. And for meats. Yeah. When I say meats, I mean more red meats. I don't ever do it for chicken. I feel like it's not necessary for chicken really at all. However, if you're doing it with meat, like a roast or um, anything of that nature, you want to give it about 15 or minutes or so, it varies on the recipe, because when you release the steam, it, it, sometimes it has a tendency to slightly dry the edges of the meat out when that happens. So we just give it about 15 minutes of a natural release, which means we don't do anything for 15 minutes after the pressure cooking cycle is complete, mm-hmm. and you finish it with a quick release. The steam is called the natural release because the steam is technically naturally releasing on its own by dissipating in the pot from okay. decreased temperature. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Um, Okay, so one last question here. Um, does Richard do the cleanup after your videos, or is that still kind of your your pur- purview? Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> be nice. What a wonderful thing that would be. But no, uh, <laughs> you know, um, he's, I guess, what can I say? I'm the domestic diva of this home, and Richard <laughs> is the, the guy who goes to work every day and, you know, that. So I think Richard is definitely, he's a, he loves to garden, actually. We have a little bit of a, a garden okay. that he's done, and uh, he can tend to that. Okay. I tend to the dishes. I actually like, believe it or not, I like doing the dishes. Okay. Well, that's that's great for you, because I'm sure you've got plenty. <laughs> <laughs> You're moving around. Like, this wasn't exercise enough for the way I took it my hand. It's exercise. <laughs> Oh, wow. Well, thank you so much, Jeff, for joining us tonight. It has been such a pleasure to talk to you and get to know you and learn about your passion. Um, we're we're so sad you couldn't be with us in person tonight. I know we originally um, invited Jeff for an in-person awesome event, and then we had the pandemic, so we switched to virtual. Um, but uh, if you would be so kind, and I've, we've no- noted this a couple times already, we'd love to have you here in Missouri. Oh, it would be my pleasure. I'd be there in two seconds. All be right. So, so whenever, whenever things open up again, we will have you here for finer books and um, help, help our instant potters out. All right. Well, really thank you. Oh, any last things you'd like to say? Uh, thank you to every, every single one of you who's watching this. I can't thank you enough. For every, I'm, hear, I'm hearing some feedback. I'm not sure if everyone else is too. So if you are, apology. <laughs> um, I want to thank everyone out there for uh, just you know being amazing and for sharing my recipes and trying them. And thank you so much in the bottom of my heart. Truly, thank you to Elizabeth and Tiffany and everyone from Voracious as well. Okay. Thank you so much, Jeff. Um, thank you all our viewers, Facebook and YouTube. We are so excited again that you joined us. Uh, it was St. Charles City County Library's first Facebook Live author event. Um, so thank you for being part of that. Uh, we have a few more coming up with our St. Charles City County Reads event uh, with our local um, local restaurants and breweries and bakeries. On Tuesday, May 12th, we have Abby, the head brewer from the Third Wheel Brewery here. Uh, Thursday, May 14th, Jackie, the founder of Sugarbot Sweet Shop. And Wednesday, May 20th, Father Dominic, the bread monk, will be here. So please join us on Facebook Live for those. Um, again, thank you to Jeff and his team and everyone. And have a wonderful evening and stay safe. Good night. Take care, guys.